Hello and welcome back to my Chromatic Nature YouTube channel. My name is Natalia and on this YouTube channel I show you guys how I use natural dyes to dye clothing. So for those of you who are subscribed to my channel, I'm sorry it's been so long between my last video and this video and it's mostly because we moved across the country. We moved out of Oregon and to Virginia and my Chromatic Nature business is now officially Virginia based and my website is back up and running so you can go ahead and uh, go over there and buy dyes or mordants or whatever you want to buy. So this video is about dyeing with weld but I also wanted to include um, some of the process of me making this dress that I dyed with the weld and if you don't want to hear about that, you don't care, you're just here for natural dyes, then you can go ahead and fast forward to um, this time to skip the whole dress making process. I'm also splitting my videos into chapters now, so if you go in the description, you can just click on the chapter that you're interested in and go straight to that part. So let's get into it. My design process starts with a quick little pencil sketch. The dress I'm making is going to be built off of my existing sleeveless dress pattern. I just want to add like an asymmetrical slit to it. And I'm also gonna make the hem asymmetrical to match the lines of the slit because I think that'll kind of give it an interesting look. And what I'm doing to add this slit to the pattern is pinning where I want the slit to go on a dress that I made using that sleeveless dress pattern. I dyed this dress with Osage Orange but I burnt it trying to cure it outside and now it's just getting used for pattern making purposes. I'm pinning it the bottom and the top of the slit and I kind of moved it around as I was going because I wasn't happy with exactly where it was landing at first. You can see I made this pattern a long time ago by my hair. Alright, so this is the pattern of the dress as it is. And now I'm gonna take the pinned dress and I'm going to trace basically where I pinned the slit with this little uh, spiky wheel and where I raised the hem and now using the holes from the spiky wheel whatever it's actually called I'm tracing and making the shape of the slit and the new hem shape on this paper pattern I'm going over these hand-drawn lines with my pattern drafting curved rulers to make the lines nice and smooth. I add a half inch seam allowance on the bottom hem and then I cut off the part that I don't need on the bottom anymore. And I added the seam allowance to the top and I'm going to cut the top part off and then the top piece of the pattern is essentially done. And then I don't really feel like um, wasting another piece of paper to like remake the bottom so I'm actually just gonna add these little pieces of paper so that I can finish the bottom piece of the pattern without redrafting it and I'm adding the seam allowance there and there we go now the bottom of the pattern is also done and that's about how it's gonna look they're gonna overlap just slightly on the front and then I made a back pattern for it also the back of the pattern is just going to be solid but with the hem raised. Then next I cut out the pattern pieces from fabric and I'm just using my regular t-shirt um, cotton spandex fabric that's made with organic raw cotton. And there's all of the pieces put together and the little neckband. Alright, time to sew. I did the neck and the shoulders first. And now it's time to do the slit. I am going to finish the slit with elastic because if I don't, it's just gonna be like flapping and loose. There's no way it's gonna be contoured to the body. 
This elastic I'm using is actually natural rubber elastic encased in organic cotton and I got it from an Etsy seller called Sustain by Cat. I'm gonna link it in the description if you would like to get that too. I cover stitched the edges of the slit with the elastic in there, but it kind of stretched them out. So what I'm gonna do is when I serge the sides of the garment, I'm just going to cut off the extra from the front that got stretched out. Okay, and there we go. I overlapped the front pieces on the sides a little bit so that they stay together and the garment doesn't start ripping uh, right there at that point. The hem is kind of uneven now because I had to scoot up the bottom pattern piece to overlap them, so I just cut off the little part on the bottom that wasn't even. This dress is still pretty long, it can stand to lose an inch. And then I hem everything, and the garment is done. And now it's time to dye this dress. So the tie-dye pattern look that I'm going for is almost like a little floral pattern. I want these little tied nubs to look like little flowers. So I'm leaving the tops of them a little loose so the middle part gets a little color. And yeah, so they're gonna look like little whitish flowers on yellow background. All right, I'm done tying it up. Um, hopefully these are spaced okay. Did the front and the back. Well, time to get this started. This is what I'm gonna use today. The 16 quart stainless steel pot for my dye pot. This little um, thing to heat up water and this to measure water. And this I'm gonna use for the cold soaking procedures. I'm going to dissolve uh, my mordants and ingredients in here. I'm gonna use plastic sheeting to protect my uh, surfaces. And then I have my big tongs for moving the bundle around in the dye and a plastic stirring spoon and just like a couple things to measure out the ingredients with. Oh well, and the other thing is my scale and my smaller scale. The tool that I forgot to mention is my digital thermometer, which is actually very important and I use a lot through this process. The first thing I'm gonna do before I start mordanting is pre-soak my dress in just plain tap water, lukewarm water. I'm just gonna leave this to soak for an hour or so before I start mordanting. The first ingredient that I'm gonna use is terra extract. Um, this will be my tannin. The next ingredient that I'm going to use is aluminum lactate, which is a cool mordant because even though it's um, also kind of a metal salt, it's actually derived from renewable resources. So it's not made from minerals mined from the ground. And then I'm going to finish off the mordanting process with calcium carbonate. It's going to shift the pH of the mordanted bundle to be more basic. You don't want the dye bath with weld to be acidic, it will destroy the dye. And then the last thing I'm going to use is the organic weld extract. So first I'm measuring out the terra powder. I need about 12 grams of it. The dress weighs 120 grams, so 10% of that is 12. And right now I have about 12.3 and that's close enough. I'm going to dissolve it with some hot water that I heated to about 130, 140. Stirring it around to dissolve it. I'm filling the pot with just enough water to cover the garment and let it flow about freely in there. I'm going to start heating up this water and I'm going to add the dissolved terra to it. Right now it's only at like 117 degrees, but um, I'm heating it up to around 160. I'm squeezing out the dress from its pre-soaking and in it goes.
All right, we're about 160, that's good. That's about the temperature that I wanna keep it at. So I'm gonna lower the heat. And I wanna keep it at this temperature for about an hour. I think it's been an hour now and it's still maintaining the right temperature, thankfully. Now I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm going to remove it from the hot burner so it cools down. And now I'm gonna use aluminum lactate to mordant the garment further. I also need 10% weight of fiber in aluminum lactate. So again, I need about 12 grams. It's like 12.3 and that's close enough. I'm gonna dissolve the aluminum lactate with some hot water also. The aluminum lactate dissolved to be just like completely clear. I'm adding it to some room temperature water. Um, this part of the process you don't need to do on the stove. And now it's time to transfer the dress from the Terra soak into the aluminum lactate mordant soak. It's still kind of hot, but I'm wearing gloves and it's fine. It's bearable. <laughs> I'm not burning myself. In it goes, and it's going to sit in this aluminum lactate mordant soak for about an hour. Now I'm going to prepare the calcium carbonate or chalk after bath. I'm only using 5% weight of fiber in calcium carbonate, so 6.2 grams is about 5%. The water looks kind of yellow from the terra tannin, not from the aluminum lactate. I changed out the water. And I'm going to mix the calcium carbonate into this bath. And then I'm going to soak the dress in this. It only needs to be there for about 30 minutes. And while that's going on, I'm going to prepare the weld. I'm also going to use 10% weight of fiber in weld, so once again, about 12 grams is what I'm going for. I'm dissolving it with some hot water again. This extract does not dissolve to be clear, obviously. And you might be wondering how this is going to get us a bright yellow, but it does. You just have to trust it. I'm filling up the pot with water again, and this will be our dye pot. Putting it on the heat. I turned the wrong burner on. Um, Alright, I turned the right burner on, and the water is heating up. Look at that swirling extract goodness. I'm going to add it to the dye pot now. Yeah, this murky, swampy looking water is going to get us a bright, bright, vibrant yellow. It's about at 135 degrees at the moment. I'm going to heat it up a little bit more. And meanwhile, I'm going to finish preparing the garment by squeezing it out again and I'm going to rinse it in some fresh water. You want to rinse the garment after you give it a calcium carbonate bath because you want to get the calcium carbonate little particles off of it. And the mordanting process is done. The dye bath is at the perfect temperature, 169, 170. I'm going to turn it down a little bit because I really don't want to get it any hotter. And in goes the dress. Right now, not very yellow looking. But actually, it's starting to pick up color already. Okay, it's been an hour that it's been sitting on the stove. I'm turning the heat off now. Oh, that's pretty yellow now, isn't it? 
That's a lot more yellow than it was an hour ago. So I'm moving it off the heat. And what I'm going to do is let it gradually cool overnight. And I'm going to leave the dress in the dye bath till tomorrow. Next day. Let's see what it looks like now. Alright, that looks pretty dark and mustardy. But of course the color is going to change once it's dry. You gotta always expect that once a garment is dry, it's gonna get a lot lighter than what it looks like in the dye pot. And the dyeing process is essentially done. And now I'm going to untie the tie-dye. So let's see how my little flower pattern actually came out looking. That's kind of flowery looking. It's pretty much what I thought. This takes me a good long time. So I'm just gonna go real fast through this footage. They kind of look like little dandelion puffs, which is kind of perfect. That's exactly the kind of little flower I was imagining on a summer dress. Okay. I think these came out spaced pretty good. Yeah. There's no like blotches, at least visible right now. I'm hanging the garment up to cure and dry for a day or two. And then two days later, the garment is completely dry and it's ready to be uh, washed. Since it's just one garment, I'm not going to use the washing machine for it. I'm just going to wash it in this tub. And I'm going to use Synthropole, which is a good neutral detergent to use as an afterwash for after you dye garments. And I'm just going to hand wash it. As you can see, there's color coming out, and that's inescapable with natural dyeing or really any sort of dyeing. And then I'm gonna rinse the garment in some clean water to get all of the soap residue and whatever off. And then I dry it in just like the regular dryer, and I iron it. And there it is, finished. It's pretty bright yellow! Here's footage of me outside wearing it. You can see how vibrant the color is. And the slit came out pretty good. It's kind of how I imagined and it's nice and snug. It's not doing anything weird. And I think the hem detail adds a nice little touch to it too. Okay, I really like how this came out. I think this color is really cool and my little circles came out really nice. I think it's a perfect summer dress and I think the design of the slit also worked very well. So this will be on sale on my website. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed learning about dyeing with weld and it inspires you to make your own weld dyed garment. And I hope you check out my next video whenever I post the next one. Bye! This time, or this time in the video, I don't know which way it's going to be pointed. And it's going to um, make, it's going to help. Um, and I have my um, little force, little uh, tongs.